Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Didn't see you there. Hold on, let me just pass this on to my friend. Welcome to CS61C Caches Part One. Woo! Great to see you as always. Let's get right in. So we're first gonna learn about something called the binary prefix. This is really important as you're learning about caches and as you're learning about how to work with um, two to the blank blank. What does that even mean? How to think about how many bits encode a certain space? All those things we'll learn in this next very short video. So let's go back in time. We had kilo, mega, giga, tera, peta, exa, zeta, yada. And these were commonly used to SI, Système International, I believe it's called, uh, prefixes that we use for things. So if you had, uh, I got a, a, a kilo, oh, dude, I got a key. This is like uh, Scarface, I got a key. If you got a key of something, that's a kilo, it's a thousand of something. But in fact, people were using a kilo to describe powers of two. You know, they had, you notice that the difference, there's a big difference between only a very small difference between something, you know, here's base 10, a kilo of something, and this thing that we didn't have a name for, uh, 1024, that's a little bit. But as you continue to grow, well, how about a mega? I got a mega something, it's a million, but you know, here is, you know, it started at 48,000, now it's a little bit bigger than that. So, and as you, as you continue to grow, notice it here, it's, you're now off by a full, say, 20%. So there's an issue, and we never really had a solution um, to this. There is a historical note you see there in the second bullet, which is hard disk manufacturers started years and years ago by using powers of two. You notice powers of 10 are smaller than powers of two. And so they'd say, you know, a, 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 I have a hard drive that was a 10 meg hard drive. They used to be two to the 20 times 10. So uh, that was 10 of mega, which is two to the 20 bytes. And they realized, wait, if we actually use the proper terminology, mega is a million, and a million is smaller than this two to the 20. So they decided to then move to using that. So in fact, if you get a 10 meg drive, and nobody gets to me, you know, 10 gig drive now, 10 terabyte drive, it's not the left column of powers of two, it's, it's the right column of powers of 10. And so they realize they can be a little cheap on things, so when you format it, it's all, not only, formatting is also some overhead, but the point is, you don't get a drive that's actually into the power of two. Even raw bits, it's the power of 10, not powers of two. And we also use in networking, we use uh, the base 10 for networking. So if I have a gigabit network, it is a 10 to the ninth bits per second. That's, that's always been that way, and that's fine. So network transmission is base 10, hard drives are base 10, everything else, caches, memory, everything else is base two, and so we want to make sure that we talk about this in the right way. I can't just say a, a kilo. How much, how big is your cache? A kilo, it's a kilobyte. Well, do you mean a thousand bytes or do you mean 1024? Let's actually make sure we have a distinct word for that. We can't just keep using kilo, um, can't overlo keep overloading kilo. Enter the IEC, um, International Electrotechnical Commission in 1999, a big deal, introduced these binary prefixes. And the idea was they kept the same columns as you had before, K, M, as you see up top, K, M, G, T, P, E, Z, Y, except that they added a little bit of an I here. So each of these you see there's a little I in front of them. Um, and in fact, the way they pronounce them is, um, it's like, the kilo and the mega and the gibby. So the first two letters are the same, but then you add bi for binary to make it distinct. But rather than call it bi, so rather than ki, bi, me, bi, they wanted, it's a, maybe they sounded better to call it b. So it's me, bi, kibi, me, bi, gibby, tebi, pebi, eggs, bi, zebi, and yabi. That's how you pronounce them, okay? And now we have distinct meanings and that's just great. So now we can be distinct. Oh, I got a 10 tebi drive. I know, I, you know I'm 10, two to the, two to the uh, 40, not, uh, 10 to the 12. So that's great, much, much better there. You're gonna ask yourself, well, how do you memorize these things? If I say that, and you wanna be able to have, make a connection between what these, what the, what the order, at least the order of it is. <clears throat> so this is a fun challenge that I offered to 61C students years ago. And I said, come up with a mnemonic, come up with a way to remember this sequence that no one else has. I think this is a Berkeley invention, this, the way to remember these. So feel free to use any of these 10 I'm gonna show you, whichever one kind of rings true to you. So let's jump right in. Kid meets giant Texas people exercising zen-like yoga. And I try to actually give credit to the student who did that. I want to give them some anonymity with the last name, but I gave their first name. Um, and in, in the challenge, I made sure the first two letters are the same first two letters, everybody. So you can, once you say K-I, make any word with K-I star. Uh, you know, it's M-E star, et cetera. Kind men give 10% extra, zestfully, youthfully. 
That's pretty cool. Some of these are pretty good. Kissing mentors gives testy, persistent extremists zealous youthfulness. Kindness means giving, teaching, permeating excess zeal yourself. I feel, I feel like connected to that one myself. Killing messengers, don't kill the messenger, right? Killing messengers give, gives terrible people exactly zero, yo. You have to kind of do the hand. Yo, you do the hand. I know that. I hope this is the yo hand. I'm up, I'm not giving some gang sign out there. Um, kindergarten means giving teachers perfect examples of zeal and youth. I love that. Kissing mediocre giraffes teaches people to expect zero from you. Kinky mean girls teach people exciting Zen yoga. Kissing Mel Gibson, Teddy Pendergrass exclaimed, Zesty, yo. That's the one I remember, actually. <laughs> when I'm like, okay, is it Z-Y? I'll actually say that one. I'll say, I'm revealing a little bit of my head here. I actually say that one when I try to remember. If I, is it E-Z, is it E-Z-Y, E-Y-Z? I use that one if I get stuck. And here's my favorite one. And this is not the one I use, but it's my favorite one. Kissing me gives 10% extra zeal in youth. So tell that to your friends. Tell their friends, not talking about kissing Dan, but kissing yourself, you know. Hey, Ralph, what, Sue? Kissing me gives 10% extra zeal in youth. Woo! Okay. Anyway, whatever you decide to use, pick one of these, pick, make your own up, but remember this sequence. This year, we're all, of our, 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 all of our exams are gonna be open book, but in the future, we might go back to closed book and we'd like to be able to have you memorize this. So this is a good thing. What is two to the 34? How many bits to address that? Uh, how many bits to address 2.5 Tebby B? Uh, tebby bites of something. So these are two questions that you might um, want to be able to answer quickly. And in fact, I encourage you as a 621C soon to be graduate to be able to be fluent in this space. So the way I think of it is I want you to memorize these two tables. In fact, I'm going to actually have a little, have a little sound here to say, please do think about memorizing these tables. And the way to do this, the way to, to, to know how to do this is the following. 2 to the xy, x is the tens column, and y is kind of the ones column. I start with the ones column, and it's really easy to memorize this one. Let me just grab. So you want to be memorizing this, this sequence right here, okay? So 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. We're up 5 now. 6, 64. I'm not even looking. I'm closing my eyes. 64, 128. 256 is 8. That's another important one because 8 bits used to control... 256 different color channels for a standard old school monitor, including the PPMs you worked with. Um, if you did uh, 621C this semester, when you had a, a assignment that had a PPMs. 9, 5, 12, and then 10. Well, 10 is the next one, okay? So that's all you gotta remember. So those nine. And then you go back to the Kibby, Mebby, Gibby, Tebby, Pebby, Eggsby, Zebby, Yabby, and you have that sequence. And that is the X, that's the tens column. So you have it very quickly, ready? 34. In my brain, I'm saying, Four is 16, okay? So you look at, I've been looking. Four is 16, okay? 30s, well, the 30s is Gibby, so I'd say 16 Gibby. Did I get it right? I did, okay? That's pretty cool. So, let's do another one. Uh, I almost feel like I have a random thing. Here you go. 47, 128 Tebby. Pretty cool. 64, man, I got a 64 bit address space. How many bytes of memory can I access? 64. 16 eggs B. Wow, that's pretty cool. So continue to think about that. And now the reverse of that is the following. If I say I want to be able to address 2.5 Tebby bytes, well, how many is that? Well, what you do is you take 2.5 and you take the ceiling of that. What's the next biggest power of two above that? 2.5 is bigger than two, so it'd be four. So I'd say four, that'd be two, okay? So I'm gonna say something two. Tebby is four, so I'd say 42. I think you need 42 bits to address 2.5 Tebby bytes because 42 bits is four Tebby, and four Tebby is the next big power of two above 2.5 Tebby bytes, okay? So, we often call this the IEC numbers, but here binary prefixes is the right name. So from now on, this is the beginning lecture on caches, and this lecture really could have gone, in fact, maybe I'm mookifying these lectures into small pieces, could have really gone the first lecture, because it would have been fun to have this, kind of be fluent about this from the beginning of the semester, but you don't really need it until caches, and so this is in the cache lecture. But I hope in the future, this lecture is in the front, and feel free to ignore this a little bit about it. If it actually is in the front, why we should move it, because it already has moved if we happen to do that. Okay, you don't understand that, but it's fine. All right, we'll see the next lecture, and we'll learn more about caches. Thanks.